What is up, YouTube? Third Impact here to give you my review of Out Noah Zero, Episode 2. And if you couldn't tell by my review of last week's episode, this has got to be my new favorite show this season. It is just so awesome with how they set up this entire universe in the first episode, all of these characters, and even had the tension between Verse and Earth broken at the end of the episode. And this episode begins right where the last one left off. The Knights of Verse have crash landed their flying fortresses into all these capital cities across the world, and they have now deployed in their cataphracts, which are these really powerful mechs powered by Aldnoa. And we just see them laying waste to the Earth's defense force. And apparently they have been training and preparing for this for like years. But what we see in this episode is just that the Earth has absolutely no chance of winning against Mars, against Verse. And these mechs are just way too powerful. I thought that maybe the Ald the Aldnoa, the mechs that we saw the um, people piloting in the first episode that they were training in were maybe powered by Old Noah in some way or something along those lines, but they just seem like regular, ordinary mechs, and they don't stand a chance against these cataphracts. So we're seeing this very Pixis from Attack on Titan-like commander just sending his troops to their deaths, essentially. And it's awesome action. It's great how we got the action from the invasion right at the beginning of the episode, but things aren't looking too good for Earth. So Inaho's friends are helping with an evacuation effort, and Inaho is on his way to help them when he sees the very small girl that was with Princess Asylum in the first episode, and another girl down by a bridge. So he thinks maybe they're tourists, maybe they need some help. So he goes down to investigate when the larger girl grabs him by the arm and takes him to the ground in this hold. And here we again see Inaho just really keeping his cool. He's a very calm and collected person, and he can very quickly assess the situation and tell that there's no need for him to be freaking out. These people aren't really going to be causing him harm. He's just going to do his best to help. And we learn from them that they're seeking the Verse Embassy. They need help, and that the princess that was in the parade was obviously a double. Even though I freeze-framed and I saw that it looked a lot like her, obviously it looked like her. They were using a double. Um, so they're seeking asylum, not the actual asylum. They're seeking asylum from the embassy. But it turns out this other girl with the small one is Princess Asylum. I'm not sure if they made that very clear in the episode, but if you couldn't figure it out from the dialogue and what was happening, it becomes very apparent if you watch the end theme. <laughs> and not to like really suggest spoilers from the ending and the opening, but just to quickly touch base with the opening too, I kind of moved past that. It is um, performed by Khalifa, um, the same girl that performs the Fate uh, Zero openings. They sound very similar, not in a bad way. They sound very good and very similar. But one thing from the opening, at the very, very end, we see Princess Asylum turn with a gun. So I feel as though there's going to be a very crucial decision or scene involving Princess Asylum and having to shoot or not shoot somebody or something at some point in the series. So that'll be a big deal. So the Versar wanted to plant a flag at the death site of Princess Asylum to sort of mark their conquest. So Crutio sends off this guy... Trilltrum in his cataphracts, which is going to be dropped by a ship piloted by Slain. So Slain's clearly, he's from Earth, we know this, they refer to him as a Terran, and they really look down on him. And it's they're just real assholes to him, like they are to all Earthlings. But I guess it's mainly the fact that they work with this guy, Slain. He was taken in at some point, but obviously they just don't give a shit about him at all. He's clearly not wanting to be hurting the Earthling, doing the things that he's doing. But on the way there, Triltrum makes a point to take out this one air fleet of Earthlings and really just do it like really morbidly overkill. Even this one guy that evacuates from his ship, they ram into him and just splatter him. So he's just really trying to break Slain down and rub it in that, you know, they're, though they're nothing but insects to us and... You know, the Varys are just extremely elitist and all caught up in their ways. At the same time, this Aldnoa technology that we see very soon, um, we've already seen it 
you know, in all these cataphracts and how powerful they are. But once Triltrum drops, he activates the Aldnoa power of his mech, and it essentially makes it so that nothing can touch his mech. Anything he touches, he just phases, like, right out of existence. So, even though these guys are extremely just assholish and elitish and think they have the power of the gods and all of this, they really do have ridiculous power. Just completely ridiculous. So... He's coming down to drop this flag, and he also meets up with the people that assassinated um, Princess Asylum, or set up the missiles and everything. And one of them is this small girl, Rayette. Obviously not an assassin, but the daughter of one of the assassins. They're all thinking that they're going to get picked up by Triltrum and head back to Varys to get knighted for the thing that they did. But as we see from Triltrum's next action... Even their own people are completely disposable to them because he uses this phase swipe to just swipe out a huge group of his own people. And then when he notices Rayette, he begins to chase her and he's just walking right through this huge like highway bridge that they're running across because he can just phase through anything. It's just dis disappearing as he goes into it. And from here, the evacuation party of Inahau and his friends and also Yuki... Uh, the girl that stays with Inaho and is part of the military, they met up at one point by accident as they were evacuating. But now they notice Rayette, they think that she's a civilian and needs to be saved by these cataphracts. So they go, they begin to battle, and it's like, is Yuki going to be killed here? Because, I mean, technically, with the princess not being assassinated, nobody's died yet. But you still have a really bad feeling with this show. Um, I still felt like from... Uh, Princess Asylum's death last episode that it meant characters could die and just because she we found out that she had a double it wasn't making me think that people were safe and this whole time I thought that Yuki was gonna bite the dust um eventually Marito comes into play the coolest character from the last episode the guy who has a bit of a drinking problem was there on the moon 15 years ago when the gate was destroyed and you knew that Marito needed to stay around because he has a backstory he has some important stuff that still needs to be resolved but even during his little fight with Trulltrum, he puts up a crazy fight considering he can't do anything i thought for a split second he was dead too and i was like okay he survived but now it's like seriously we just need to get out of here there's no way that we can do anything to this guy and they take yuki's um the mech that's been disabled and they're pulling it with their evacuation truck and it's weighing them down, and Trilltrum's chasing after them. They can't get enough speed, and uh, Inaho has the genius plan to stop for a split second. Um, the cataphract, cataphracts that um, just wipes out, phases out anything, it kind of catches up briefly, and it takes out like a half or maybe like a little bit more than a half of Yuki's mech that's at the back of the truck. And it allows them just enough weight to be able to speed ahead, which was just awesome. I thought that Inaho was just so smart for doing that. But at the same time, uh, Okisuke and Inaho are on the back of the truck at this point. As they're pulling away, um, there was some crazy bumps, explosion stuff going on. And Okisuke is kind of flying back. Inaho is just hanging on. They must have been going really fast because Inaho is like flying through the air. I mean, uh... O Okise is just flying through the air, Inaho is just hanging on, but he can't keep his grip, and Okisuke goes flying into the mech, and is killed, is just, poof, is just phased out, and again, Inaho is just like, is just staring at this mech, at this cataphract, and just disbelief, like, he can't even, he can't even fathom, like, what's happened, like, everything that's happened so far, it seems like he has an understanding that these things were going to happen and that this is what war is like but this is the first time it really directly affects him he seemed pretty like whatever matter of fact about things before but he's kind of just taken aback a little like at his friend's death but like that happened and like i'm sure other people are gonna die as this goes on but um once they get a spot where they get to take a little break we find out that marito is still alive and that the cataphracts is still chasing them but it seems like he has a plan. Inaho is going to get revenge for his friend, and he's going to he's going to go in, and they're going to take out Trilltrim. 
somehow. I have no idea how they can do it, but I feel like uh, Inoho's going to prove himself with this next episode, and they're going to take him out with some crazy, crazy plan. So I can't wait for the next episode of Old Noah Zero. Such a good show. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Peace.